What did you do when the war ended? Well, I was uh, I hesitated between going back to Coventry and going to Paris to learn a bit more about re reinforced concrete. I'd been earning 360 in Coventry in 1940. In 1946, after six years of war on De Mom, they offered me the princely rise of 20 pounds per annum. So I, I gave them the safe soldier's farewell and went and knocked on Fresnay's door. And he took me on for my de mob leave, and at the end of my de mob leave, he took me on the staff. Right. So I, I was there for three years. What sort of projects were you working on? Bridges. I was... Um, he was a great man, Fresnay, for insisting that anyone who was concerned with pre-stressed concrete should start off by finding out how to do it. So my first job was on harbour works repair, in Loav. I was on three particular jobs, one after another, and I was the bloke who picked up the bloody jack, put it on, fixed the wires on and pumped. Right. And it's a very revealing experience. Yes. So when you see an anchor drawn on the board, you know what it means. And amongst other things, you know that you need a lot of room behind it and a lot of room around to get at it. Mm -hmm. And it was a very revealing experience. One has to say that with Fresnay, you're not dealing with an ordinary man. Mm -hmm. He has put it himself very well. I had the good fortune to be seized from childhood by a vehement vocation. And there was moments when one had the impression that here was a man wrestling with an angel. Is the fury with which he would greet any, not errors in calculation, but any stupidities in calculation. This was a, a sin against the Holy Ghost, as far as he was concerned. I was with him when he was building the five identical bridges over the Marne. And he did it by sitting at his desk in an armchair like this. And, uh, you know, you could see him pushing out. He, he wasn't thinking about a bridge, he was becoming a bridge. And then he'd scribble a few things on paper and then he'd look at it and tear it up and throw it away and scribble again. And uh, Finally he got to the stage when he drew the whole thing out with a, with a fountain pen and passed it out to the drawing office. And after a fortnight they came in and said, um, sorry Mr. Fresnay, we can't, you know, we can't just, what she said. Where are your calculations? So he showed him his calculations, so he took his calculations, tore them up in small pieces, threw them in the air, waited till they hit the ground and trampled on them. Well, they went away again, and after a week they came back and said, it's all right. <laughs> the second bite of the calculations, they perfectly satisfactory. What I'm getting at is that Fresnay had, uh, really beyond human measure, a sense Guillon has said to me, if you ask Fresnay if something will buckle, and he says it won't, it won't. If he says it will, you can rely upon it, it will. Now where did he get that from, I don't know. 